picture yourself aboard a spaceship soaring through the cosmos thousands of kilometers away from Earth, isolated and self-reliant. Suddenly, you detect a colossal impact reverberating through space, or you perceive eerie, otherworldly music that defies explanation. In such solitude, how would you cope? Today we present seven unsettling statements from astronauts that shed light on their eerie experiences. Maurice Chatelain. Maurice Chatelain asserted that he held a senior position at NASA. During his active tenure, Chatelain claimed to have been privy to numerous incidents and sightings involving extraterrestrials and spacecraft, leading him to believe that these beings are among us, observing humanity and have a long history on Earth. Following his retirement, Chatelain authored several books that delved into the potential influence of extraterrestrials on human culture and the emergence of the human species. One of Chatelain's claims revolved around censored NASA film footage, which he contended showed UFOs hovering near astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin when they made their historic moon landing. In June 1975, People magazine featured some images supposedly confirming this assertion, and Maurice Chatelain corroborated these claims. According to Chatelain, moments after Armstrong set foot on the lunar surface, Armstrong radioed a censored message stating, These babies are huge, sir. Enormous. Oh, God. You wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there. Lined up on the far side of the crater edge, they are on the moon watching us. It's worth noting that NASA vehemently denies these accounts related to the moon landing and maintains that Maurice Chatelain was never a member of their organization, but rather an insignificant engineer and subcontractor. Edgar Mitchell Astronaut Edgar Mitchell is primarily remembered for his involvement in the rescue of the historic Apollo 13 mission. However, his contributions extend beyond that remarkable moment in space history. Mitchell was outspoken about his beliefs regarding extraterrestrial life. He boldly asserted that high-ranking military officials had concealed evidence of UFOs and were keeping this information hidden from the public. Mitchell's upbringing in New Mexico, in close proximity to the White Sands testing range of the U.S. Army, influenced his perspective. He claimed to have witnessed flying saucers regularly since childhood. Furthermore, Mitchell suggested in interviews that extraterrestrial beings had intervened to prevent humanity from self-destruction by manipulating nuclear weapons. It's safe to say that according to Mitchell, we owe a debt of gratitude to these extraterrestrial entities. Yang Li Wei As we've previously explained, Sound doesn't travel directly in the vacuum of space, a fact well known to astronauts who have ventured into space. Even on the International Space Station, ISS, astronauts rely on technical equipment for communication. They must use headsets and special radios to make their voices audible in the vacuum of space. These voice signals are converted into electrical codes and then transmitted as audible sound to the intended recipient. If an astronaut strays too far from the intercom system, their voice dissipates into the void of space. Given this understanding, it's perplexing that Chinese astronaut Yang Liwei reported hearing a sound resembling the striking of an iron bucket with a wooden hammer during his space mission in 2005. What adds to the mystery is that six other Chinese astronauts who embarked on space missions between 2005 and 2008 also reported hearing this same unexplainable sound while in space. Dr. Musgrave Dr. Story Musgrave is widely regarded as the preeminent scholar of space exploration. He stands as a unique figure in the history of space travel, possessing an exceptional level of education and distinction that has not been matched by any astronaut before or after him. Dr. Musgrave had the remarkable opportunity to venture into space on six separate occasions, a testament 
to his exceptional career. During the Apollo 15 mission, Dr. Musgrave, a man holding university degrees in six different disciplines, made a curious observation while looking out of the space shuttle's windows. He spotted a white object, approximately three meters long, floating through space. Upon returning to Earth, NASA offered an explanation, suggesting that Musgrave had seen a piece that had likely detached from the space capsule or the rocket. However, Musgrave remained unconvinced, and as fate would have it, he witnessed a similar object again. This time, the object resembling a snake was significantly larger, spanning about six to eight meters. Dr. Musgrave was steadfast in his belief, and in numerous reports and interviews following his NASA career, he asserted that these sightings were evidence of extraterrestrial life. He contended that these were civilizations far more advanced than our own, visiting Earth for at least 100 million years. Musgrave even expressed his earnest desire to communicate with these beings, acknowledging that the odds were incredibly slim, but still hopeful that they might respond. It remains a hope that one day, Musgrave's efforts will bear fruit, providing concrete proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life. Alan Bean Alan Bean, an astronaut who participated in the second lunar mission in 1969, Apollo 12, played a crucial role as the helmsman of the landing capsule on their journey to the moon. While on the lunar surface, Bean's primary objective was to install scientific equipment. To achieve this, he conducted two spacewalks, totaling over seven hours in duration. His missions led him to the vicinity of Oceanus Procellarum, a vast area flooded with lava and famously known as the Ocean of Storms. The landing site for Apollo 12 was situated close to the Surveyor 3 crater. During their lunar traverse, Bean made an intriguing observation. He spotted an unusual shiny object a few hundred meters away from their path. He promptly reported this sighting, but experts speculated that it could be attributed to optical illusions, reflections, or perhaps unusual environmental factors. On Earth, we are familiar with phenomena like moonlight and Earthshine, where sunlight is reflected from our planet onto the lunar surface, creating a subtle, diffuse illumination. Another potential explanation for luminous appearances on the moon involves specific types of rocks and minerals with reflective properties. While these minerals are relatively uncommon on the moon, it's not implausible that Alan Bean encountered a substantial accumulation of feldspar, a mineral known to glimmer or emit a radiant glow when exposed to sunlight. Bean's observation remains a fascinating lunar enigma, prompting questions about the peculiar phenomena and distinctive geological features encountered by astronauts during their lunar expeditions. Leroy Chiao Leroy Chiao, a former astronaut with NASA who completed multiple space missions and even commanded one to the International Space Station, ISS, has been involved in discussions related to paranormal phenomena, UFO sightings, and encounters with extraterrestrial beings after his active tenure at NASA. During an interview conducted at a conference focused on extraordinary phenomena, Chiao shared an intriguing personal experience. He described encountering an unusual, almost translucent entity at the ISS, which appeared to have arms or tentacles and was floating. According to Chiao, this entity was situated within a craft resembling an inverted V-shape adorned with strings of lights. Importantly, it's worth noting that this account comes directly from Chiao himself, and has not received official confirmation from NASA. As of now, NASA has refrained from commenting on whether Chiao reported his observations and whether any investigations were conducted into the matter. Chris Hadfield Chris Hadfield, a Canadian astronaut who formerly commanded the International Space Station and had a distinguished career as a fighter pilot in the Canadian Air Force before venturing into space, recently commented on unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, 
ahead of a forthcoming U.S. government report. In his remarks, Hadfield candidly acknowledged that he has encountered numerous celestial occurrences in the sky that have left him perplexed. Despite his extensive space experience, he expressed reservations about people hastily attributing these sightings to UFOs or extraterrestrial beings. While Hadfield strongly believes that extraterrestrial life likely exists elsewhere in the cosmos, he emphasized the need for humanity to take a more serious and methodical approach to the search for potential life forms beyond Earth. Rather than endorsing speculative conclusions, he advocates for rigorous scientific exploration. The question arises, do these statements and sightings provide unequivocal evidence or do they allow for entirely different interpretations? <laughs>